Hi lovelies, how are you doing? I have a new video for you. I'm going to show you how I make the Denise Court leather backpack. This is a sequel to a previous video where I showed you how I created the digital drawing. So essentially bringing it from my imagination into a digital drawing. This video is more about how to take it from the digital drawing to the actual backpack. A link to the previous video will be in the description, so make sure to check it out. Now let's get started. Enjoy! After I created the digital drawing, I also had to sit down and do a bit of calculations to make sure that the bag was uh, to the right specs of my customer. I was making this uh, for a custom order, essentially it was supposed to be a backpack that could fit a 15 inch laptop and what was actually key is that it was made with cork leather. Now while I typically do leather working, I would not technically consider this leather working because cork leather is more of a fabric. But the techniques really can be applied as well there. There's just some minor differences to be, to be mindful of. Now that the design and the measurements are ready, I can start cutting the pieces. There are quite a few pieces, so what I'm showing you here is the organic canvas that I've used for the lining. Uh, the design that you see is based on one of my acrylic paintings, acrylic pouring paintings, and that has been printed on this uh, fabric. It's a really sturdy fabric. Um, I find it goes really nicely with uh, leather uh, because of its weight. If you're considering starting a project yourself, I'd recommend that you start with the largest and longest pieces, for example, like the straps and the main parts of the, of the bag. Um, this is because um, you might end up still with areas that um, you can cut smaller pieces from. So for example, what you see me doing there, I'm, I'm cutting smaller pieces of the remains that I had from the fabric. This also means that you're less wasteful and that you can maximize the fabric that you've purchased. To help prevent from, for the fabric to fray, I'm using zigzag scissors, also known as pinking shears. For this particular bag, I needed uh, two types of zippers. One was going to be the main closure of the bag, um, but there's also an inside pocket that is also zipped. Um, additionally, there is a snap buttons and um, a, a various adjusters and other hardware that I needed to use to be able to create the straps and make sure that they were sturdy and adjustable for, for, the, for the backpack. These projects typically take more than one day to complete, so I like to put all the pieces together in one box so that I do not miss anything or that I do not confuse it with any other parts. So here you can see the cork leather that I've selected. It is absolutely gorgeous. It's so playful and colorful. It has this kind of glittery um, rainbow-like particles. And uh, what you see me doing here is rearranging the, the pieces because as I mentioned earlier, um, this is a custom design. So this was actually the first time for me working with cork and also um, making this bag, this specific design. So you see me there folding the edges. Um, that's just to see how the cork fabric behaves. Um, in my mind, for some reason, before working with this fabric, I always thought it might crack. Like uh, if you if you use cork, if you've ever had cork in your hand from, let's say, a wine bottle, um, it can be quite uh, porous. Um, so yeah, I was just testing and seeing how do I need to manipulate this fabric to make sure that I get the, the desired result. One of 
the design elements of the Denise backpack was the curvature at the closure and here you see me essentially drawing it with pencil first and now with a silver pen. Um, what I also want to highlight here if you're working on your project, um, when, you, when you do uh, designs like this and you know that you will do them again, I really advise that you take a, a paper or a cardboard, whatever you have available that has a bit of a thicker texture. Um, so that you create a template. So you draw it one time and with this um, cut piece you can then create the template by essentially tracing out the lines and then you never have to hand draw it again and it always will be the same. Now that I have the piece cut, I'm going to place it right sides uh, facing each other, meaning that's the two pretty sides looking at each other. And I'm going to clip it in place. Um, I use clips for cork leather just like I would with leather, simply because it might leave um, some marks if you use uh, pins. So I wouldn't recommend those for this fabric. Whenever you're working with curves that you have to turn inside out like I'm about to, you should really make sure that you cut little notches like I am here. This is going to help for the curve to be really nice and defined and to avoid having stretch edges uh, when you have um, turned the fabric inside out so there will be no areas that bunch up. tool to use for this is a bone folder I believe it's called um, it's really firm so that it actually can push out the corners but it is yet soft enough it has two sides typically one side is pointy and the other side is round and uh, you can therefore um, push um, the, the corners that you want without damaging it from the inside What you see me working on here is the inside pocket of the bag. I'm cutting a slit in a way that I can place the zipper I'm using double sided tape which is absolutely amazing. If you've never used it I strongly suggest that you start using it. Um, this is a great alternative to clips, pins and even glue. 
um, it allows you to sew really nicely the materials won't shift on you but it is not as um, sticky um, as let's say glue so that you can still move things around if for example you placed it incorrectly at first I've sewn the zipper in it in place um, I will only then go ahead and sew the outer part to the to the lining to the one side of the lining on the opposite side of the lining you see here the um, laptop holder it's really to make sure that it just doesn't rock uh, when, when you're carrying it in the bag and here you can see me testing out with an actual 15 inch laptop if, uh, if it's gonna be fitting in nicely comfortably and here's the lining and you can see the absolute beautiful colors how they look where every time you open the bag this is what you will see um, I absolutely love those colors, how they turn out and uh, what I'm showing you here is essentially um, it's a box technique. What it allows um, to happen is for the bag to have more shape and sort of to not just be absolutely flat. On this next step you just see me grabbing the straps that I will be attaching to the backpack and I'm placing the adjuster and the D-rings to make sure that I know exactly how I want to attach it to the bag. Um, I need to make sure that it is the right lens and that it's located in the right place so that when you're wearing it, that it feels actually comfortable.
I was happy with how it looked, I added, uh, you might be able to see there at the ends of the strap, some, um, some of the lining fabric to kind of complete the, the look. Um, it's also like just a nice little detail. And uh, now I'm actually attaching the straps to the, to the finished back of the backpack. So you might see that, that I have added a handle, uh, a couple of D-rings and also a strap that sort of fixes it all together in, onto, the, onto the back of the backpack. To secure the straps I'm using rivets and um, what you see me doing there is just making sure that I have selected the correct size depending on the thickness of your material that you're trying to punch through. Um, I always recommend to go a little bit smaller rather than too large. If you go too large, you might end up bending the rivet instead of um, really securing it how it's supposed to be. Um, but yeah, rivets are, I find, are one of the best um, tools to use for these kinds of scenarios. So essentially straps are things that are gonna hold a lot of weight because they're really sturdy. Once you have them in, it's really hard to undo them. If you've ever had a project where you incorrectly place a rivet, you know what I'm talking about. Um, so yeah, they're really, really great for this. And uh, here I'm using a rotary punch, I believe they're called. Essentially, it's a, it's a tool that you can um, make holes with. Um, this one has different sizes, which can also be really handy since you might have different size rivets. To attach the rivets, I need to hammer this down. So, apologies for the little earthquakes.
Before we jump onto the reveal of the bag, I just want to say thank you so much for still being here and watching this video. I hope that it was fun to see the behind the scenes of how I make the bag. I hope that the advice and tips that I've shared with you have been useful and that it gets you motivated to start creating yourself. Make sure that you give me a thumbs up if, if you did like the video. It helps me a lot. And um, if you have any questions um, about the bag, the materials, anything that you've seen here in the video, make sure that you um, comment and I'll do my best to answer to you. If you'd like to see more of these kinds of videos or actual step-by-step -step tutorials, make sure to subscribe because there's more to come. And now let's check out how this bag turned out. Thank mm -hmm. you.